about the same size as the last one. There he is! Oh, double. Double. double! Double! Oh, that's a fatty! Four pounds there. There we go. We're into a big school of them. And he's hooked up. There's a big one. There's a big one. Big one. There's a good one. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're launching out of Russo's Marina out here on the California Delta with one of my new buddies, Andy Kachia. Nick. Thanks for taking us out here, Andy. This is going to be a lot of fun, man. Uh, Andy's been guiding on the Delta how long now? Well, I've been doing it full time since 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been guiding since, uh, you know, off and on, supplementing my tournament fishing back in, you know, as far back as 94. Awesome. So about almost 20 years now. Woo. If you guys haven't been on the Delta fishing for very long for bass or stripers, you, you may not have heard of Andy, but if you've been on the Delta fishing, trust me, you know who Andy already is. Uh, what we're going to do is hunt some early season stripers today. A lot of the time the bigger ones move in a little bit earlier, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of a hunt. We're going to try to break it down, how we're doing it along the way. Shh, try to pick it apart for you guys, show you some of the lures, the gear we're using, and hopefully put some big fish on film for you. Yeah, we should. Uh, it's been a pretty good top water bite going early in the morning. We're out here early, and uh, the key is finding that bait. We find that yeah. bait. We find the birds diving around and hanging around, and, and hopefully we can find us some good school of fish. If you guys want to check out Andy's guide service, which I suggest you do, I'm out here with Andy, and there's a reason for it. It's coochesfishing.com, right? Yes, sir. All right, and I'm going to put that on the bottom of the screen, so go check that out, guys. Let's go get some fish. Stay with us. So Andy and I are working around the track out here. He's throwing a spook and I'm throwing a pencil style bait. Uh, pencil's just a little bit thinner profile than the spook is. Displaces a little less water, but we're still doing just the walk the dog method. Stripers really like a bait that glides side to side. Um, top water baits are a killer search bait. A lot of the time you could tell the difference between a striper strike and a large mouth strike. And you'll see. A lot of the time you'll get a good visual indicator on the size of the fish too, so it can tell you if you're wasting time. Plus, there's nothing that beats a topwater strike anyway, especially when you're striper fishing. These tuxedo bass come up and really try to slaughter it. So that's what we're searching them out with this morning. If we get into really heavy grassy areas and they don't want to commit to the topwater, we're probably going to go with more weedless stuff like uh, little swim baits and uh, yeah, you know, maybe some flukes just to try to get them to commit, but we'll get it figured out here for you guys and we'll get them. There is our first tuxedo of the day. There's a tuxedo bass. And that bass there, he wants to stick me as quick as I stuck him. <laughs> the reason why they call them shakers, that is notice shaker. that fish is shaking like mad. Now, one key thing, guys got to be real careful with these stripers because especially these smaller fish, you can see how much he's shaking. You've got these big treble hooks. I typically will grab that spook, that top water, and then pin that fish up against my jacket. Don't worry about getting a little bit of stink on you. It's better than having that big old five odd hook and they come off real easy. If you grab them around and pin the gills and lay those dorsal fins. Those dorsal fins, for those of you that don't fish for stripers, these things got real stiff stickers all over them. They're like a porcupine. And, uh, but if you grab them like that and lay those pins down and then grab them and punch those gills, because they've got stickers on the gill plates too, it'll freeze them. And that way you won't get stuck. I look like a quality one. Probably around 20 inches. There's one. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's deeper. Oh yeah. Just like this. Coming around this side. It's one of them resident fish. Let's get them back over. You want them on this? Oh, you want them on this side? Oh no, where? Come on. Oh yeah. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Here we go. About 21, 22. He's gonna. He's gonna shake. He's gonna shake. Yeah, I knew you were gonna shake. I knew it was coming. <laughs> there we go. Just a little guy. Not a giant by Delta standards, but right now until these big hens coming in, fish that side. Why don't you explain the a lot uh, of fun? Why don't you explain these native fish to him, Andy, versus your salt? That one? He's about 20 inches. 20? Yeah, he goes over the board. 
Nice. But yeah, that's one of the that's one of our resident yearlings, not the really yearlings, but uh, <laughs> you know, got a nice color to him. Starting to get a little belly on him. Still kind of skinny. I've, that's one of the things I've noticed that a lot of these stripers out here um, in Frank's track. They're the smaller ones right now. The big ones really haven't started moving in, but they're coming. But these two-year class fish that are in here, that are just now starting to move in with all this shad. They are, uh, they're really skinny, so they're just now starting to feed. So this is the time of year when you want to be out here. We've had such a great shad spawn this last year, and that's the key with these stripers. These stripers are coming in from the salt water out of the bay into the delta for one reason and one reason only because they have, don't have any forage out in the bay. It all moves offshore, so they come in here for the stripers, and that's what we're doing today. We're out here chasing uh, shad schools. We, uh, just looking at the bait. Nick saw school, he yeah. had a blow up. I threw him behind him up <laughs> by the grass bed, and boom, that one came and got mine. So and maybe we'll gonna... get to capture some bait for him on film if we get some consistent bait balls rolling around. Yeah, if we can see one of those yeah. real nice, big, you know, yeah healthy school. half football field size schools <laughs> bait yeah we're just scanning over it and if you can see the bait start touching the surface usually that means the stripers are starting to corral that bait, bait. and if you could throw right up and around the bait I, i'm starting to see a bait ball out here actually yeah and then if you throw it up there a lot of the time you'll get there before the stripers start nailing them and you'll get and second or third chance opportunities off. too yeah. yeah yeah instead of just one cast by getting there once you see it already going throw to that bait and a lot of the time you'll get that one fish out and get that other fish yeah if, when you're out here and you know as much as we love fish and boils if you can pay attention to what's going on and be aware of your surroundings and like you say you see that initial mm -hmm. movement of that bait starting to get corralled you're going to get a better opportunity to catch those fish because once they all start busting they start focusing on things and they got a mouthful of shad here and a mouthful of shad there well by the time your bait crosses out of the strike zone you miss out on it yeah it's, you got to get there as fast as you can when you even if you start seeing them bust get there don't try to scoot over if you got somebody behind the big motor fire up get there don't come up too close about 40 50 feet is really about as close as you want to get you pull up on top of them they're going to scatter and they're gone but hopefully if you do it just right, you might be able to pull one or two fish out before the boil ends. Here's another. Oh, they busting on it? That one's about 17, 18. Just walking that pencil bait. Got a little short one here. He's probably right on the mark, but we'll let him go. Let's get after it. We've seen them busting over here, so we're trying to capitalize on the moment. <laughs> it's about the same size as the last one. There he is! Double! Double! double oh, that's a fatty! <laughs> yeah! Oh, I gotta get back out there! <laughs> okay, he's in the boat. We'll catch him. There we go. I think the boat is probably right on. Alright, let me get back out there in case they're there. Something like you got that on. Stay with us guys, we'll be right back. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs from the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium? Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby! Are you ready for a pair of polarized sunglasses that's going to improve on your fishing game? Well, Bluefin Eyewears address all the current issues with fishing glasses. No more pressure or discomfort behind the ears. They're super lightweight with improved face gripping technology and not to mention a lifetime warranty. BluefinEyewear.com, guys. Check it out. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. 
Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.RCFishingWorld.com today. Did you know that Bass Angler Magazine has more articles than any other bass fishing publication? And with the top pros from around the nation spilling the beans in every issue, there's really no reason for you not to be subscribed to the most informative bass fishing magazine there is. Bass Angler Magazine. Thanks for watching guys, now let's get back to the show. Now I wanted to show you guys some clips from the day before. You know when it comes to striper fishing, the five B's are your best friends. That's binoculars, birds, oils, bait fish, and boats. Now white birds have an uncanny ability to see the reflection of ultraviolet rays off a of bait fish and those bigger fish chasing them. The three birds in the delta you really want to focus on are terns, egrets, and then seagulls. The terns often dive on bait fish because they primarily eat fish. The egrets will sit nearby uh, waiting for that easy opportunity for that bait to get pushed up and then they'll swoop in and grab it. Um, seagulls, you know, they're primarily scavenger birds that focus on wounded or dead bait. So if you see seagulls diving and circling around in a big group, uh, you know, and they're just not sitting on the water, the usually that means the stripers are in there really thick and you're going to really hammer them out. Now I'd love to tell you at that point when you get over to those birds and you see them diving in, it's a guarantee from that point, but you still have to make good accurate cast and uh, you got to be able to walk the dog good and stay in that strike zone. Walk those baits side to side as long as you possibly can uh, to irritate those stripers to come up into striking it. Um, now, if there's weed lines, solid banks, riprap walls, or boats nearby, stripers are just like bass. They're looking for an ambush point. They're much more likely to eat your bait. Let's say that you see them boiling 10 feet away from the side of a ship or the side of a riprap wall with rocks on it. They're 10 times more likely if you put it closer to that riprap or to that ship to bite it. So keep that in mind. It's almost a guarantee if you get it that close, if they're boiling, that they're gonna come up and slam it. Now for the line I use when I'm casting for stripers, I use 50 and 65 pound Spectrix braid. Uh, that's a P-line braid. And for my bait casting outfit, I use seven speed so I can exit that dead water. As soon as I get it outside that boil or where I see them actively feeding, I get it out of there fast, get it right back in. Okay. I'm pairing that up with a seven foot six fast action heavy oh, rod. That seven foot six allows me to pick up a lot of line on you know distant hook sets. Um, the reason for the braided line is long range hookups. A lot of the time I'm casting as far as I possibly can and I need zero stretch to hook them as far as I can out there. And that braid, I'm gonna be able to hoist them in. Um, that fast action on that rod is gonna give me a good accurate cast at long range. And then I have a ton of backbone with that heavy power class. These, the better stripers are intermixed with these smaller stripers that are busting on our baits right here. Oftentimes, we're on the uh, Stockton Main Water Channel right here. And a lot of the time, when this fish are out busting in the main water, is they like to use these barges and, you know, the pilings just to trap the shad. It's something to force it against it. Hook that burn? Oh, busting me. Busting me. Got him, little guy. thing you want to do Got one. is filter through these small ones fast. We're really early in the season still. So we got to filter through a lot of smaller fish. You know, that happens. You got treble hooks on your bait. You're dealing with this a lot. We call undersized stripers shakers. And when you're dealing with shakers, Try to keep your hands off them. They're barbed, they're real sharp. They'll end up sticking you back with the treble hook so they'll shake you to death. Let's see if we can get one another one out from under here. Looks like they're just trapping the bait under this. There's another. There's it. Oh, got him. <laughs> A little guy. Oop, back hook. Oh. Yeah, another little 12, 13 inch fish. The trick is, when you're early and you're dealing with a lot of the resident male stripers, these, most of these smaller male stripers like this, 
are going to beat you and beat the bigger fish to it. So if you can get them off fast, which he's not making it easy on me to do, you have a much higher odd while they're boiling to get that bigger fish. Now let's get back on, over baby. to Andy. Well, there's another one. There's one. That one's probably about three, four pounds there. There we go. We're into a big school of them right here. We uh, found them right off this little grass bed. <laughs> we drifted off of our little island. There That's another nice one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, there we go, baby. You guys want to catch fish like that this? That was a double. Call Andy up. We're just beating on these things. We haven't been out here but an hour. What is this, third third keeper right here? Yeah. I mean, look at these. Third keeper. Um, yeah. Well, it took us two spots to oh. find them. Let's get her once out. We, uh, <laughs> once we got on them, they're biting pretty good. You, and, and you know, and this is typically how that striper bite is. You, you gotta get into areas. There's another one. <laughs> there we go. Get out there, Andy. I'm gonna pull them around this side. Around a bit. That's a short one there. Andy's hooked up. There's a big one. There's a big one. Big one. There's a good one. All right, we say they're good ones, but oh, he come on by. Oh. oh, he's right behind it though. Come back. Come on. Oh, that was. A... Oh, he took my hook off. <laughs> Tell you what, that was a pretty good fish. We're gonna. Ah, oh, baby! Go he came back and got yours. He came yeah! Back and got yours. That is one hungry fish. That's a, oh, that's, that's a green striper. Oh, look at that! Look bass. at that green striper. That's the beauty of fishing this river this time of year, because not only are you catching stripers three and four pounds. You're gonna get three, four, and five pound largemouth in and amongst them. Yeah, baby. There you are. You're shaking, man. I always That's shake. a beautiful thing. Ain't nothing wrong with uh -huh. that. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at that. That striper, that one I had on. Now you gotta get a good look at that. <laughs> and I replace all my O-rings, factory O-rings, and uh, that striper, <laughs> he's, he pulled that o ring free. That one I had on was probably about a 10, 11, 12 pounder. Get back out there. He's and there. Uh, now I gotta go find me another spook <laughs> because this one's uh, worthless. Sitting around the edge. Little guy. Little fella. A little black bass. You get a lot of this. You know, that's, again, like we said, you know, you, it's the beauty of fishing. The river in the fall when those stripers run in they get to compete and, and the stripers are just feeding 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 and a lot of times they're going through these schools and they're knocking off and killing some of these shads and these largemouth just sit right around there and peck off the fish that are falling so you have the opportunity to catch a lot of largemouth too when you're fishing with these stripers because they both inhabit the same thing it's all about the bait yeah you find the bait it. You're gonna find both species. And a lot of times when you get those stripers, a lot of times we find stripers when we're out here looking for largemouth. Mm -hmm. And then times we come out like today where we're looking for stripers and we're catching largemouth too. So what Andy and I are doing now, we just got a little largemouth on the jerk bait, is we're searching out a little area around here that he knows of for uh, the striper usually hang out in. Well, the suns came out overhead and a lot of the bait fish are moving down deeper, so our stripers are gonna be deeper. So another common set of lures that we often use for searching for stripers are swim baits like this with jig heads. Expose the hook right here because uh, it's not too much grass around. Uh, we would rig it weedless if there was a lot of grass. And the jerk baits. I mean, when you're fishing a jerk bait, it's really hard to not get bit by a striper. If they're around, they crush jerk baits, especially in the middle of the day like this. If they're around, fish those big shady walls, uh, you know, any little target you can find where there's bait nearby, the stripers will come get that sucker. Yeah, with that high sun that we've got right now, the fish, you know, they're not wanting to really come up right now. And so we got to get deeper. So we're, we're getting lures out there that we can get down to where the fish are. Yep. I like using the DD100. It's a Lucky Craft jerk bait in a chartreuse shad. You're matching the shad. It's got a little deeper diving and you can get it down there, eight, mm -hmm. 10 foot. And in the areas that we're fishing right now, 
you know, we're in anywhere from 18 to 30 foot uh, here. We've seen a lot of bait in the area and uh, we're getting a lot of short strikes, but um, eventually we're going to start catching these fish. We'll and, find them. And, and they just eat. I mean, there's a point in time when they don't want to come up on the surface. You go down after them, and these are the baits that we're using to get down to them. Yeah, just like we did earlier with those top water baits. We were searching, 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 found them, crushed them, knocked their lights out. It's been right close to two hours now, and Annie and I are not sweating it whatsoever because we know as soon as we find them, we're going to crush them on these setups. I just got the kicker minnow. He's got the jerk bait. As soon as we get it in front of them, it's going to be bam, bam, bam once again. And then we got to figure it out from that point. But uh, so far, the spooks, the pencil baits, the jerk baits, and your swim baits, all killer choices for stripers. Yeah, much like what we experienced out here too. You know, even though we're not catching a lot of stripers at the moment, we're still getting those largemouth to come up yeah. and bang with us. So yep. that's the beauty of this river, folks. This time of year, when you're out here chasing these stripers. You know, you're always going to get some kind of action, and there's certainly nothing wrong with catching largemouth bass. Oh, yeah. I mean, we already got a couple of nice ones. I got that big one earlier. You couple, got one on a swim bait? You got one on the swim bait. It just tried to swing it by the boat. Didn't get it on film for you guys, but bounced about a two and a half, three pounder off the side of the boat. But I was out yesterday striper fishing and weighed 17 pounds a largemouth, and I didn't make a single cast intentionally for a largemouth. So get out there, guys. You're going to have a lot of fun. You got one. All that time. Hey, there's an afternoon striper. An afternoon delight. Another one of those little jerkbait fish. You know, it's just <laughs> this time of year, you just keep chucking and 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 chucking. And what about chucking? And then chuck some more. Oh. And then you know, call Chuck, and <laughs> Chuck will say Chuck. You're not chucking enough, Chuck. But, um, Chuck. Yeah, another little resident striper, just a small guy. He didn't even really give up a fight, he just did the old catfish roll. <laughs> um, but that's that DD100 deep diving crankbait. We're back out in Frank's track. We're fishing some openings. It got a little bit of current flow on it. A little deeper water. Um, looking for some of those fish on the outside that are pushing the bait up against the ledges. and. Uh, we finally found one. It gets tough when the sun comes out. It does. It is the afternoon bite for stripers um, is not always the greatest. Um, it's a struggle. It's a grind, and that's part of striper fishing. The guys that want to do this have to learn that. Mm -hmm. that. That early morning bite is always the best. And uh, Low light striper time. You just got to keep put in the work. plugging away. And sometimes, you know, the deeper you get, the deeper you fish, the better chances you are. We're in an area that's a little more stained, mm -hmm. which you know might allow them to roam a little bit more. I mean, after that morning, crushing them on top, big difference from midday fishing. Yeah, you really got to stick it out. Oh, the biggest largemouth on a rattle trap. Oh, oh, I don't know. I didn't see nothing. Yeah, all of I eight. I didn't see a thing. Eight or nine at didn't least. Didn't see a thing. <laughs> it was a line side. Only thing was, I think the lines were going the wrong direction. <laughs> it wasn't the right fish. There we go. Oh, that's a block. Is it? They're on rattle traps now. Oh yeah. There's one you can have on a bill. Better fish there. there. We go. Yeah. See there. Yep. Nice one. Little black bass there on there. You know, we changed up what we were doing. We moved off the deeper stuff. We actually tied up about three hours from where we were catching them this morning. We're on the same grass bed that we were catching them this morning. Yeah. We had those stripers because we saw all that bait in here. And we're throwing up here throwing rattle traps now, lipless crankbaits, and we're actually catching fish. So the fish are still here because the bait's here, and we're just presenting them a little different bait. <laughs> and it looks like we got a double. And there you go. Yes, Look did. at there, another green one. Woo! Traps out. And oh. Andy's face is safe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I have a safe face. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Guys pay a lot of money for their safe face. You just <laughs> gave me one for free. And now we got a double blackie hookup right there. <laughs> California Delta. Lipless crankbaits in October. Doubles, baby. Over. 
Now here's a special tip of the day from Cooch for those of you that uh, experienced backlash. Dun, dun, you're dun, 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 special tip of the day by Andy Cuchilla. Tip of the day, and that's a fact. <laughs> You get those backlashes, you know, just cast. I just made a bonehead mistake. I hit the trolling motor. But what you do with these, instead of trying to pull, pull, pull and dig, get your thumb, bury it down inside that reel, tighten your drag down and turn two or three times and then pull. And that thing will magically come out every single time. If it doesn't come out, click the reel, bear it down, pull it again and pull and that backlash will come out it'll save you hours and hours of picking on your line it also what it'll do is it'll prevent you know as you're trying to pick you get those kinks in your line that uh, will cause you problems when you cast and you break a lure off in midair this way you don't get those kinks you get that backlash out and that knot and it works it works real well with braid and especially well with fluorocarbon you pull it out to the lines all nice and neat you're back in business and fishing within 30 seconds bite oh striper oh it's a line side hey line side. that's an afternoon program <laughs> now the original rattle trap, you can chuck and wind this thing. If stripers are in the area, they will eat it. Will eat I it. mean, flat out. The original rattle trap, that is a lipless crankbait that always tends to get bit, even when times are real tough. I mean, this is no great catch by any means, but we're still catching stripers. And rattle traps a staple in casting for stripers. You have to have them. If you don't have them, you're what? That chrome and blue, though. There, that chrome and blue is is just. Uh, if you got one color to pick, and you're gonna throw a rattle trap out, chrome and that blue. chrome and blue is it. And yep. the beauty with the chrome and blue is you will catch any and every species of fish that's in this river. Everything eats it. Catfish, <laughs> bass, yeah. largemouth, the smallmouth up the river. Steelhead, steelhead kings, salmon. Yeah, yeah. They'll eat it. You will even catfish will even eat yeah. that thing. You pick up a rattle trap, chrome and blue, and chuck it out wherever you go. You'll end up with fish in the boat. It's just how it works. Good job. So good, let's get this one. guy back out. So a lot of the times when you're out here and you're fan casting around, you're looking for obvious signs. You're looking for bait moving. You're trying to get those stripers. You can't find them. The birds aren't showing you anything. Now, a lot of the time, if you look over here, you'll see the openings in the toolies over there. Out here on the river, even when the current's going slower, if you have a slow moving current, stripers like that faster current because it forces a lot of bait into them. It's highly oxygenated. So when you look right there, a lot of the time you're gonna find the current's going a lot stronger going through those little openings, those doorways, those little funnels where the water gets sucked through. If you can't find any of the obvious signs, go over there. That's what Andy and I were doing earlier. We didn't really get them. We got one little tiny short fish, but a lot of the time you can pull up on those, throw jerk baits, throw traps, throw swim baits, even top waters through there, walk the dog style baits, and they'll show themselves immediately. They like those areas. So if you can't find the birds, you don't see bait, your common spots ain't producing, look for areas like that where that water's really sucking through there. And oftentimes you're gonna find fish in those areas. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, we really couldn't get on them too good in the afternoon. We were running around. It's still really early yet, but I mean, we cracked out three limits early on. If we wanted to, we would have had our fish and been out of here, but that's how striper fishing goes. You got to run and gun a lot. You got to get out there and get after them. You can't expect to sit there in one spot and soak it out and get them all day, you know? That's just how it goes. Andy came out here with us. I mean, put us right on the fish. Immediately we got out there, got to crush some big ones. Man, Andy, I appreciate you taking us out here. Hey, Nick, it's been fun. It's my pleasure anytime. It was great, uh, great, great action this morning. I know that big old giant came off. Well, but... we had a big one that got away, but that's fishing, you know. If you don't have a big one get away, you ain't fishing. That's right. You got to get back out there the next time and get after them. Then we wouldn't have any stories, right? <laughs> All right, guys, make sure to check out Andy's website again. I'll put it right down here on the bottom. Uh, it's only going to get better. It's October 1st today. What do you think? Just all throughout the next couple months, oh, it's going to load up the for next, you? The next two weeks, we're going to start getting the wave. 
you know, that's going to start moving in. They're going to, they're, they're out towards the Sherman area in that brackish and water. You have and they're a, making their way. you have a special way. time for striper trips too, specials, right? I run specials, but I only do it when the fishing's really good. When they're here in the system, mm -hmm. we run a four hour day where we go from sun up for four hours and then we'll do the evening four hours. So um, you, yeah. they can call and talk to me about that. And we only do that, that when, when the fishing's really good. Yeah. So that four hours is a special four so hours. So when you see that available on Andy's website, book because he's going to go out there and crack them with you. Well, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you learned a lot about striper fishing today and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.